everyone here we go ball cap bible study wow it's april 1st you know what that means april fool's day but you know it just reminds me the bible says the fool says in his heart there is no god uh, let's start there well i'm rocking this um uh army air corps insignia picked this hat up uh through the uh world war ii museum out of uh new orleans uh it's pretty neat if you've never been there. Uh, I highly recommend you go there. We'll talk a little bit about this hat and, um, you know, what uh, the symbol stands for and that kind of stuff. If you don't know me, my name is Wade Cruz. I'm the pastor for senior adults at Quail Springs Baptist Church in Oklahoma City. And we have a good time there. We had a great Easter. I hope you did, too. Going to do a little bit uh, of an abbreviated, you know, uh, Easter lesson, so to speak. But a really... You know, this insignia uh, meant something. Uh, when you saw it on somebody's uh, sleeve, on their jacket, on their shoulder patch, or on a hat or something, you knew who they represented. You, you knew they were they were part of the good guys. Uh, you could associate with them. Today, uh, I see a lot of people that, you know, maybe provide lip service about who they belong to in the Lord, uh, but you don't you don't see any insignia, you don't see any evidence. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about that, but um, really, you know, in a in a war, there are good guys and bad guys, right? There are, you know, there's the enemy, and then there's your side. Now, um, you know, some uh, his revisionist historians are trying to confuse people with well one person's you know enemy is another person's freedom fighter and whatever but you know it's not hard to tell who's good and who's bad i mean it just isn't all you have to do is is observe people for a little while <clears throat> now we can go deep into theology and talk about how we're all bad and we're all sinners saved by grace for all of sin and fallen short of the glory of god there's none worthy, not one. The wages of sin is death. And all that's true. But, you know, something like this meant something. And we're going to talk about that day. So so really, <clears throat> when you get into spiritual warfare and uh, your walk with God, you know, you, you've got two sides, right? You've got, you've got the godly and you've got the ungodly. Well, I want to talk about something out there today, two worldviews. And we're going to look at, uh, like I said, a, an Easter lesson <clears throat> where even 2,000 years ago, I really believe that that God's trying to show us in his word that there are two worldviews. Uh, you know, something's either for God or it's not for God. It's either godly or it's ungodly. Spiritual warfare is real. And you don't have a choice. You're on one side or the other. Um, I don't want this to get overly long or even overly deep, but uh, really, I mean, there are, there are all sorts of worldviews that people want to try to define. Um, you know, do you come from a capitalist worldview or, you know, are you a, a, a very uh, independent person that wants to live out in the country in the woods by yourself or do you have a big city worldview mentality? All, all those kinds of the ways, you know, the lens you see the world through. Well, let me suggest that there are really, when it all boils down, when we talk about things we're doing today, you know, a ball cap Bible study um, yesterday, if you went to church, we're talking about the two worldviews that that exist on a, on a spiritual plane, Okay. Uh, there's a worldview that believes what God says, believes in God, embraces him and his standards. And then there's a worldview that doesn't. Typically, we call we call that godly worldview a scriptural world, worldview. Uh, some people may say Christian worldview, but we'll, we'll just for, say scriptural uh, worldview that, you know, is based in the word of God and believes it says what it means and means what it says. 
Now, there's all sorts of uh, faiths and and uh, understandings and belief systems, hermeneutics, you know, how you interpret the Bible. All that is in there. But let's just take the two basic. Scriptural worldview. And the other worldview, I think we've been, we've been duped uh, as believers. So we'll, we'll call it the secular worldview. But decades ago, they came along and they said, look, oh, by the way, I want you to see my little, since we don't get to go there anymore, uh, I just try to bring the, the, the stuff of, of Glorietta to Ballcat Bible study. If you've ever been there, you know that you know, you know what I'm talking about. But back to the point. I believe we've been duped or at least lulled to sleep because we've heard for so long that, well, you know, the secular worldview is this kind of worldview of tolerance and you guys, you know, you do your Bible stuff and, and we'll do our, you know, stuff over here and, and, uh, you know, we'll all be good. We'll just get along and we'll, and that's not, I challenge you, go look up the word secular. The word secular means no God allowed, no, no, no God, no, no religion, no nothing allowed in, in the town square, in public gatherings, you know, uh, meetings, uh, no, no prayer before a meeting, no, uh, nothing in the school system, nothing, um, you know, you basically the secular worldview is you keep that stuff inside your church and your house. Uh, well, that's not even the Constitution, much less a secular worldview. So when you look at the scriptural worldview and the secular worldview, those things are juxtaposed. It's not both and. That's really either or. Good guys or think of all the, the bad guy symbols from World War II. So spiritual warfare is very real. And I think it's represented the, the the two worldviews are represented in the crucifixion scene and this is a pretty brief little um lesson but I, I needed to to set it up with that okay and and you know we think we have a worldview and we think we know what it is but when you look at at Luke chapter 23 Luke 23 starting with verse uh 32 and you're gonna see me look over to you know, my side, because I'm, I'm, I'm reading a, a little different screen here. Um, so this is off of uh, BibleHub.com. I like that website. Blue Letter Bible is good, too. There's, there's a bunch of them out there, but starts off with this. Two others who were criminals were also led away to be executed with Jesus. And remember, in God's eyes, we're, we're all guilty. We're all criminals. Two other criminals um, were also led away to be executed with Jesus. When they came to the place called the Skull, or Golgotha, they crucified him there, along with the criminals, one on his right, one on his left. Okay, think about that. And then Jesus said to them, Father, forgive them. They do not know what they are doing. And they divided up his garments by casting lots. Um, I say that a lot, <laughs> especially about places I've worked, uh, people above me. Uh, Father, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. All right. That was supposed to be a joke. The people stood watching and the rulers sneered at him. So you got Sanhedrin, you got, you know, all of those folks, uh, plus the Romans, plus the Jewish, you know, community rulers. And they're sneering at him, him, capital H, Jesus. He saved others. Let him save himself. If he is the Christ of God, the chosen one, Christ means Messiah. So he's hanging on the cross. He's he's already uh, at an attitude of forgiveness. The soldiers also mocked him and came up to offer him sour wine. And they said the same thing. It, yeah, if you're the king of the Jews, they said, save yourself. And above him was posted this inscription, this is the king of the Jews. Okay. What does that sound like? Remember the temptation? If you are the son of God. If you really are the son of God, turn these stones into bread. Satan knew he was starving. 
Satan will take what tempts you and put it on a silver platter in front of you. There's a whole nother lesson in that. Maybe that's the next series we'll do, The Temptations. I like that. They were one of my favorite groups, too. Uh, one of the criminals who hung there heaped abuse on him. We'll just say it was the one on his left, <laughs> just to be funny. One of the criminals hung there uh, heaped abuse on him. Are you not the Christ, he said? Save yourself and us. Come on. It doesn't say come on in the Bible, but that's, I mean, that was kind of his attitude. But the other one, we'll say the one on his right, the other one rebuked him, saying, do you not even fear God since you since you are under the same judgment? Wow. What a, what a bold statement. So here's one guy, bitter. Here's the other guy, contrite. Uh, what does it say in Proverbs? The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. Fools despise wisdom and instruction. So the other one rebuked the first thief on the cross. Do you not even fear God since you are under the same judgment? By the way, we, we, we minimize this a little bit, the thief on the cross. It's my understanding. I could be wrong. I don't think they crucified common thieves. These guys would have had been pretty bad. I mean, execution, uh, I mean, treason. I mean, it, it could have been, you know, just going against Rome. But I doubt if um, they stole a cup of apples off the cart. Do you not even fear God since you are under the same judgment? We are punished justly. We, we deserve this. For we are receiving what our actions deserve. But this man has done nothing wrong. Then he said, and here's, here's, here's the statement of commitment. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Of course, you know what Jesus said. Verily, I say unto you, today you will be with me in paradise. But look at his, look at his faith claim. Look at his belief system statement. Look at his worldview. Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. He's, he's declaring him um, able to forgive. He's, he's saying, you know, just, just remember me. Just, you know, include me uh, when you come into your kingdom. You are the Lord. And I know you're you're going to be seated on the throne. I know you're the the um, king of kings, the person I need to submit to. Well, you look at these even back then. So it's super easy. I think this is like, you know, we could we could teach this in uh, third grade, Sunday school. Which guy represents the secular worldview, right? The the, the mocker, I jokingly said the guy on the left, but the, the mocker, the sneerer, and, and which which one represents the, the, the scriptural worldview? The scriptural worldview is represented by the guy that says, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And it leaves us with this huge challenge. I'm going to close with this pretty, pretty brief uh, ball cap Bible study today. But we got to look in the mirror and figure out which side of Jesus do we hang on? You know, what did Joshua say to people at the end of uh, of his book? He's like, look, you do what you want, what you think's right for, for you, you know, whatever way you're going to believe, live, whatever. But as for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. So which side of Jesus do you hang on? What is your worldview? What do you claim is, what is your truth claim? Look, last thing and, and we'll go. Not only the thief on the cross, but all of us, Jesus went through a physical resurrection so you could go through a spiritual one. All right, have a great week. Love you all. Don't uh, take any wooden nickels today. 
Bye.